Hello and welcome. In this video, we are going to take a look at how to store your connection strings, your SQL connection strings in the config file. So obviously, if you're using a Windows or a console application, you're actually going to have a app.config file, something like this. And if you're using, a, if you're creating a web application, you'll have something like a web.config file. They are essentially the same thing they're just xml files that store configuration settings in but um, they might be slightly uh, different they might be a slightly different format so just just bear that in mind but they should look very similar so what i've got here is i've already gotten some uh, pre-written code which i don't normally do but uh i just thought why not let's do it a little bit different today and make the video slightly shorter so essentially what this code is doing is it's got an SQL connection. We're using the using statement. So we're using the connection here and here and after this line here, this connection will get disposed off. Um, and what we're doing is we're just saying SQL connection dot open and uh, assuming that works, it'll get to this line. Obviously if it doesn't work, it will throw an exception. So we will never get to this line. And we've got console dot right line connection open. So we know that it was successful. In C sharp, generally speaking, the idea is is that no news is good news. So that if you get to this line here, we can assume that the previous line has worked, and then obviously a read line so that the uh, console application doesn't flash on and off the screen without us having a chance to view the information. So essentially, when you're creating an SQL connection, you put in a connection string. So let's have a quick look at our connection string. So we've got a data source equal to deep blue backslash sql express so my sql uh, server is called deep blue backslash sql express bonus points for anyone who knows what deep blue is a reference to initial catalog which is essentially asking us what the database is and it's called test we've got a test database and we're using integrated security which means we don't have to pass in a username and password it will essentially just use me um, the user that this code is running as. Okay, let me just quickly show you the uh, SQL uh, server. So as you can see here, it says deep blue backslash SQL Express, and we've got a test database. I've just got a bunch of test tables, but for this uh, specific example, it doesn't really matter because I'm not going to be reading any data. We don't have an SQL command. We've just got an SQL connection to prove that our connection string works. So let me click start. You can also click F5 if you want to. And uh, what we've got over here in a small font, hopefully you can see that now, connection open. So we know that our connection string works. If for example, I was to put an X before as a prefix to the server name, if I run it, this will foul and we'll probably get an exception thrown probably on this line here. Let's give it a, uh, a few seconds. Should foul any second now. Sometimes it can take a bit of time because it's going to look for a server that doesn't exist. So obviously we've got an exception here. The exception's uh, not particularly important. We know why it didn't work because we're looking for a server that doesn't exist. But obviously I just wanted to say it's important not to be scared of exceptions. Excep exceptions you can set right exceptions are really really useful it's a very powerful mechanism in c sharp well in net or core is a very powerful mechanism of dealing with exceptional circumstances in other words things that we hadn't planned for happening okay so if an exception does occur make sure you don't ignore it and make sure you don't do like a try catch and uh ignore all errors people sometimes I, I know people that for example they get scared of exceptions and they're like oh no i don't want an exception to be thrown in my uh, program um, and so they hired all of the errors that that is a terrible thing to do do not be scared of exceptions they're really useful uh, the beauty is in all of this rich information we have about what happened and then obviously you can use that information to change your code and program around that exception if you feel that that exception is going to happen uh, on a regular basis. But we won't go into that just now because that's definitely outside the scope of this video, but maybe I'll do a video on that. Let me change that back, so undo. So we now know that this code will work. Let me just run it again. As you can see, connection open, perfect. Okay, 
So we want to move that sort of configuration file. So let's go ahead and have a look at the app.config file. I always forget where to put things, but actually in Visual Studio, if you do the uh, the first bracket, the less than sign, it'll tell you what goes at that particular level. So as I can see here, it's highlighted connection string. So let's click on enter and let's do the closing bracket. And Visual Studio has very kindly given us the closing tag. So obviously start tag and end tag. And within here, we need to do another open bracket and it'll give us an indication of what we can put in there. We want add. So much like app settings, these are gonna be uh, name and value pairs. So we wanna give it a name and we also wanna give it a value, but in this instance, we're calling it a connection string. Okay, so let me copy this connection string then. So I'm gonna copy it from the start of the double brackets to the last, sorry, double quotes even. So I'm gonna copy all of the text in between the start and end double quotes. I'm gonna cut that. Let's flip back, paste it in. So we've got exactly the same thing, but we've just put it in our config file. The reason you might want to put it in a config file is because if you're working for a company, you might have different environments that this particular code needs to run uh, within. So you might, generally speaking, people will have like, for example, a, a test server and a live server. And you might even be in a, in, you might even be coding it in a particular instance where, for example, your code has to be deployed across multiple organizations, in which case each one of those organizations will have their own test server and their own, their own live server. So if you didn't put this information in the config file, you'd have to essentially change the code and build it, compile it, and then deploy it every time you wanted to change the uh, database server, which doesn't make any sense. That's definitely a bad way of doing it. So a better way of doing it is to store all of the things that can change, the configuration related um, settings and values, you wanna store those in the config file like we're doing here. Okay, so with that said, let's go back. We don't need this anymore. Uh, let me just quickly show you something though. Let me just undo that. Just in case you were wondering what this at symbol was, that's a verbatim string. So what that means is that anything within the first and the last double quote is treated as a literal string, a verbatim string. So if I remove that, it's going to complain because, of course, we've got a backslash, which is a special character which needs to be escaped if it's in a string. And obviously the other way of doing it is just hitting backslash again, which will escape that character. So I just thought, just in case you didn't know what that was, I just wanted to touch on that, but let's delete it again. So now we need to access essentially this value, this connection string within our config file. So let me save that config, config file just to be on the safe side. Now what we wanna write, we wanna write some code here. So let's start with configuration. I'm sure it's configuration manager. Now it's gonna complain because we don't have a, the namespace. So let's say using system.configuration, that's gonna be a good start. It's gone blue, which is a very good sign. It's added It's added up here, system.configuration, okay? We didn't have that namespace, we now do. And obviously the fact that it's gone blue means that the compiler knows what class we're talking about. Let's click on dot now. What we want is, uh, sorry if you can't see this, I'll probably need to go ahead and invest in some better screen recording software, but essentially we've got connection strings there, okay? Right, now what we wanna do is because this is a, a collection, so we're gonna access, um, we're gonna access items, access items within that collection using the square brackets double quotes and then we're going to give it a name we're going to we're going to uh, well there's two ways you can do it you can either put an int or we're going to give it a name well let's give it a name we could probably access it the same way by putting zero because it's the first item but you know what i don't want to do that i want to use the uh the name of it so if we flip back let's copy it off we didn't give it a name well there's a good start so let me call it i'm going to call it test db why not seems seems right yeah Seems reasonable, let's copy that, paste it in there. Now, it's still gonna complain because the SQL connection um, wants, let's just put a colon, it wants a, it wants a string, let's have a look. This is the one we, we're trying to create, it wants a string, right? And so what's connection strings giving us back? Well, connection strings is giving us back a, essentially an object. So what we can do, we put dot on the end and we can actually access that particular value. You can access the name as well, but we want the connection string itself. And that is a string. So 
that code should compile and be exactly the same as the previous code now because what we're doing is we're picking out that connection string from the config file and we are placing it in our code. So let's go ahead and see it working, hopefully. And again, it has worked. Connection open. And then obviously, as you can probably tell, what you would do if you were deploying this to a test environment, well, it's already got a test database. Technically speaking, this is a dev database. So I should have called it dev, but let's say for example, you were deploying this code to a live server. All you would do is you would change, you know, you would change the server, uh, the instance, or you'd change, you know, the, the, the database name to, to reflect what um, database you're using on your live environment. Um, and I think that probably covers off everything that I uh, want to cover off in this video. So I hope you found it useful. If you did, go ahead and hit that like button for me. It really helps the channel. Um, and if you want to see similar content to this in the future, consider subscribing because I'm going to keep these videos coming and I'll be producing uh, similar content to this in the future. And uh, until next time, take care, everybody.